at the end of this video, I would like to have accomplished two things. One is protecting the gorgeous buds of my Victoria Regina. <laughs> I don't want to pop them off. And the other is to get her on a bigger mount. It's going to be a bit of a fiddle. It's not really rocket science. All I'm doing is going to pop the mount that she's on onto a cork mount, which I have shaved off the surface just to flatten it a little bit. So I'm not taking her off the mount. It's just the execution, the fiddle, the buds and all. Oh my goodness, look at these gorgeous, gorgeous golden root tips that are so iconic for Dendrobia Victoria Regina. I love these root tips. So we're going to take it nice and slow. I have a plan. Let's hope it works out and everything is still where it should be afterwards, with the exception of a bigger, more representative mount. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that you clicked on this video. I'm not trying to create any drama. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> but yes, I'm a little bit apprehensive. So there's only one way to find out how this goes and that is to do it. I'm not ripping the fishing wire out because roots and everything are in there. And if I start to pull it out, guess what's going to happen? Yes, I am going to be cutting roots. At this point in time, I don't mind if they're already decayed. I have no way of knowing because I've got this gorgeous, naturally growing moss. Sorry for the jiggle moss thing right here. Look at that. I'd like to maintain that. So the point of this exercise is not to remove the fishing line. If I can, I'd like to get the hanger off. But if that's going to prove to be a little too much of a fiddle risking my orchid, I'm just going to cut the wire. I'm just going to cut the wire. I don't want to risk the integrity of the mount underneath because it's five years old. Or maybe now that I've cut that, will you? Oh, hello. Duh. <laughs> So that part is done. Now all I want to do is put her where I shaved off the new mount just to keep her somewhat straight and it looks really really dumb even from the side already. Let me show you. Yeah there is a gap but that's the way it's going to be. It's better for the orchid. I'm not peeling this orchid off. I do not want to set her back. Eventually, hopefully, she'll fill in the blanks there. And thankfully, I had an even closer look because there is a beautiful golden root tip peeking through that I would like to make sure it stays with us throughout this process. So I'm going to be using this Velcro tie that I got from Trisha's Orchid Life. Woohoo! Look at how handy these things are in order to secure the orchid onto the mount first and then work with the wire. Me, myself and I here, <laughs> I could use some extra set of hands, but we're going to have to make it work. It's just going to be a little bit of a slow process. So that secured her. Now, oh, do you know that yesterday I spent, I'd like to say all day, but you know, that's so general. Let's just say a good part of three hours looking for my thick wire. This is the thin gauge wire that I have, and I have another gauge that is much, much thicker. I cannot find it for the life of me. So what I've done is taken the thin wire, doubled up and made two. The thing is that I'm hoping I got the length right. One is longer than the other. So the shorter one needs to go on top because of the way the mount is shaped. And the longer one then goes around the middle. See, I just wound it up squirrely whirly to double up because I do need a stronger gauge. This orchid lives outside all year round, is subjected to a lot of weather conditions that are <laughs> quite blustery and I don't want her popping off. So what I'm going to try and do is the same as I did with the Velcro, but this time at the top with the wire.
As I'm twisting, I'm seeing that the mount on the top is getting closer and closer to the cork mount. I don't want to break this wire. It's not made for this kind of tension, but for the time being, that's all I've got. For the life of me, I have no idea where that other wire went. And just watch, now that I've done it, I'm going to just walk across and find it. Crazy, I've checked everything. Even the dogs were confused. Me walking around again and again and again, looking again and again. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to push my luck. I'm now going to do the same thing halfway down. Just keeping an eye on that gorgeous root tip. Dividing the weight and the load into thirds. Okay, fingers crossed that that root tip is safe. I mean, we have other root tips, but you know. <laughs> oh, ooh, la la. Oh, she's fine while she's lying down. <laughs> so you may be asking yourself, why am I not taking her off the old mount? If I didn't mention that clearly, specify that clearly at the beginning, I do not want to set this orchid back. She's doing so, so well. When it comes to rotting mounts, as long as roots find something that they can grab onto, they will move on to the next best thing, which is the new cork. And of course, with plenty of airflow, anything that could be rotting, decaying there doesn't affect the orchid because she is outdoors getting plenty of airflow and there is no risk of any fungi and such things forming on her leaves. Those are the reasons I do not change the mount. I just put a mount on a mount and it looks very clumsy, but my orchid is going to be so much happier for it. Oh boy, I got lucky. Let me show you. Woo! <laughs> A root tip appeared out of a place where I didn't see it because there was moss and the wire went underneath and I think that root tip is okay. There's the root tip from before. This looks nasty and that's just old algae. Not bothered. This looks marvelous. Oh, the mount is heavy. Now to test it. Drum roll, drum roll. Drum roll, please hold. Whew. <laughs> I'm gonna hang her up. I'm not gonna push my luck. I'm gonna hang her up and then we'll have a look. See, <laughs> we did it. We did it. So happy and we still have the buds. And yes, she looks oversized right now, but I'm, I'm happy this is done. I saved this piece of cork from early in the season specifically for this orchid. And just annoyed I didn't get my single larger gauge wired. That, that kind of annoys me, but I think this is going to work. You can't really tell that it is a thin wire doubled up. And now I also hope that the moss can go onto the cork. That would be awesome. And just a little recap here. These are the candidates from early in the season, the Serratolabium in full bud for the third time since it started blooming and I'm loving the new growth right here. The branching is starting to come out of its funk as well. These are all little remnants of when she was struggling with the root system growing. That's why the concertina leaves. But this is beautiful because the roots are at the base and are going into her new mount. And then Dendrobium exile is also surpassing expectations. Very pleased. She's coming into bloom for the second time. There's a bloom already opened over there. And the expanse of that orchid is all the way up there. You can see up there. So here they are for the time being, but oh, I'm happy to see Victoria Regina on a bigger mount. Now I don't have to worry about anything falling apart. Quick video, bit of a fiddle, nothing really to see here in adverted commas. No drama, thank you so, so much. No drama, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. I would appreciate it if you gave it a like, and also I would appreciate your vote of confidence if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you for that additional support as well, and thank you so, so much for watching. Stay tuned for more blooms from my Dendrobium Victoria Regina coming very, very soon soon. <laughs> I'm so excited. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.